what, what do we got in here? It's spicy. What is this deck, bro? What do these cards do, bro? <laughs> Yo, what is up everybody? Welcome to the Tier Zero Diaries. This is a fun vlog-like series where I, Bear, try to do the impossible and that is take a rogue strategy and compete with it in a Tier Zero format. We're gonna vlog a little here, talk a little there, play a little bit of a Yu-Gi-Oh! But most importantly, we're gonna have a crap ton of fun. Now for those of you that don't really know what a tier zero format is, there's essentially three key points that you can use to identify a tier zero deck. First off, if you're going to a high level event like a YCS, usually the top cut representation is going to have 65% or more of that said deck too. It's a deck that's going to be expected to win every single event. And three, other decks aren't very capable of competing with the deck. So the tier zero deck that's in the format right now is Tyrolmint Ishizu. This is a very cool graveyard reliant fusion deck where they can use the materials from their graveyard, from their hand, their field. They put it to the bottom of the deck and then they can summon their fusion monsters like that. Now look, while there are a lot of arguments to be made for why it's a very fun and skillful deck, unless you're actually the person playing it, uh, the deck can be quite a so how do we beat such a deck? Well, we play Floodgates. All right, look, hear me out. Some of the strongest cards to beat the tier strategy are Dimension Shifter, Dimensional Fissure, and Necro Valley. And look, I know, I know, I know, I hate those cards as much as you guys do, but we really freaking need them, okay? We really do, or else this is not gonna work. All right, so in order to complete the deck, I had to make a couple of pit stops to some stores, and one of those stores was my buddy Chase's store, New Realm Games, and I decided, hey, if I'm gonna stop by Chase's store, let me give Chase a sneak preview of the deck that I'm gonna play at Locals today. All right, Chase, you ready to see the play today? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready, man. Check it out. In the box. Oh boy. What do, what do we got in here? It's spicy. <laughs> this can't be real, man. What oh. is this, bro? What the? What is this? What? <laughs> what is this? What's your prediction? What do you think my record's gonna be today? You're gonna win it all, bro. I'm gonna win it all? He's, he's gonna win it all. I'm gonna win it all. He's gonna win you it heard it here first. He's... <laughs> what is this deck, bro? What do these cards do, bro? <laughs> Win it at all, man. He's won it at all. So remember when I said we needed all of those cards? That's because the deck that we're playing today is none other than Weather Painters. And before I get to that, I need to give a big shout out to Distin Coder, the man who hits the Luddy better than Ludwig himself. Hit the Luddy? Hit the Luddy. Oh my god! He's crazy! I can't move like that, man. I don't know what it is. I can't hit the Luddy. There's no way in hell I can hit it. But if you, the viewer right now, hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment down below that you want to see me bear, hit the Luddy in the next video. Hey, I'll do it for you. But remember, you do have to like, comment, subscribe, and comment it. Comment it. it, 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 it <laughs> you have to comment it down below. Yes, sir. But yeah, guys, like I was saying, Coder hooked it up big time. Coder basically gave me the entire core, like the original first edition. Some of them are Euro prints, so they look super nice. Way, way better than me having to play those ugly gold rares. Coder, my guy. I appreciate you. Weather Painters are an interesting deck where they gain effects if they are adjacent to a canvas, which in this deck are their continuous spells and traps. Guys, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. Before I play this deck, I could not tell you what the word adjacent meant. Like, I had no clue, no idea. Call me stupid, call me whatever you want. I'm, a, I'm gonna be real, I had no idea what adjacent meant. So another really cool and interesting aspect of Weather Painters that I really like is that they banish themselves for cost in order to activate their effects. And this is cool because your opponent is going to have an extreme difficult time trying to get rid of them with any card effects or even trying to target them with something like an infinite impermanence or a soliac yeah good luck with that so i'm just gonna quickly and briefly go over some of the best canvas cards in the deck starting with snowy canvas snowy canvas can add any the weather card from your deck to your hand then we have a trap called rainbow canvas which lets you special summon the weather monsters from your deck when your opponent controls a monster. And the other one I want to touch base on is Thundery Canvas, which in damage step lets you return an opponent's monster you battle with to that hand. And did I forget to mention that all your monsters just come right back during the next standby phase and you can do the same stuff all over again? Hmm, kind of crazy. I'm going to keep it a stack with you. The deck's biggest weakness is the fact that its turn one is very, very underwhelming. But if you can live past your opponent's turn the deck can set up its boss monster which is a link three monster by the name of rainbow Psst, i'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret you can use your spells and traps 
as material to make that monster. I'll tell you how very, very soon, so keep watching. And this Link monster can put up like three to four Omni Negations per turn. So yeah, good luck to your opponent dealing with that one. Now, since our objective is to just get to our next turn, we play all the cards that try to ensure that we can do that. I'm talking Dimension Shifter, Dimensional Fissure, Skill Drains, Rivalry of the Little Warlord, I can't say rivalry for some reason, and Torrential Tributes. For the monsters, we have got 10 Weather Painters maxing out on only Snow and Cloud. We max out on Snow because she is the best normal summon in the deck. Cloud is great recovery because if our Weather Spells and Traps get sent to the graveyard, Cloud can target up to two of them and place them back in our Spell and Trap Zone. Nice Feather Duster, nerds. Got him. For Hand Traps, we have Dimension Shifter and Game. Gamma. So what's cool is that before our opponent gets to play the game, we can actually banish our Weather Painter monsters in order to make sure that Gamma is alive during our opponent's turn. For these spells, we're playing 3 The Weather Forecast and 1 Terraforming to search it out. The Weather Forecast is insanely good, and I'm not even capping here. On activation, it gives you access to a canvas, it lets you use your Weather Spells and Traps as Link Material, and it even gives you an additional Normal Summon. Then, we also have 3 Snowy Canvas and 1 Rainy canvas, 3 prosperity and 1 map for consistency, and the 1 dimensional fissure because this is 1 week before the new ban list is in effect. For the traps, we've got 2 warlords, 3 skill drain, 3 torrential tribute, 1 thundery canvas, and 1 rainbow canvas. I am so glad that I have an excuse to play these ulti skill drains because they are so freaking nice. Extra deck is nothing special. Most of it is just prosperity fodder. In the side deck, we've got some going second cards in Raigeki's, Lightning Storms, and Evenly's. We've also got Necro Valley and Zombie World and ways to access them so that we can deal with those pesky Flunderies and tier players. And lastly, we have the Solemn Judgments to side in for going first. I'm, I'm gonna be real. I ain't a Weather Painter Pro. I just picked up the deck. I'm probably gonna misplay a little bit, but it's okay because you know what? I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun and I think the thing that I'm most excited about is seeing how people react when I either normal summon weather painter snow activate weather field spell or they see any weather card whatsoever in my deck I think that's gonna be really funny so you know what I think it's about that time that we pack up and we head to locos So round one, we get paired up against Richard, who's piloting Bestial Branded, and unfortunately, I lost the die roll, because if I remember correctly, my hand was absolutely insane. I think I opened Skill Drain, Rivalry, and basically a way to Weather Painter combo. As you can see, Richard opened pretty well, and you know if they're searching Branded Regain off of the Albert that their hand is probably pretty good. In the end, he does get access to Branded Retribution off of the Albion, and that card is such a nuisance to Weather Painters because it's such a good way to deal with their spells and traps. I can't the one this. You're playing with yeah. one? Oh. So obviously nobody was expecting me to play Weather Painters today, so that was pretty funny. So Richard here will chain Brandon in red to my activation of Snowy Canvas, which isn't the worst thing in the world because it's only one pop since he's only using one card from the field, but it does kind of hurt that he is denying me that ability to search. After that, I'll use my additional normal summon from my field spell in order to normal summon Cloud. I'll proceed to go into the battle phase, swing into the Guardian Chimera, use the effect of Dundry Canvas so that I can banish and return the Guardian Chimera to the deck, and then I don't really have much else I can do except for set to pass. So now while I did have the skill drain for the normal summon of Albert, Richard is just crazy. So chain link three, he'll actually activate droplets, which will dodge the effect negation from the skill drain since Albert is no longer on the field. And then from that point on, Richard just pops off and there's basically nothing I can do about it. So rivalry unfortunately doesn't do much here because uh, all the big beaters are dragons. Cool little play here though, even though Cloud was negated by the droplet earlier, I can still activate for cost. And since it is in damage shift, the Serenir actually can't redeclare, which is actually really, really cool. So even though I did get to live another turn, when I was going through my deck and I was searching for a card to add, I realized it was kind of hopeless. So I was like, yo, let's just go to game two. All right, so on to game number two. Obviously, I choose to go first. 
we start the turn by activating Pot of Prosperity, see a bunch of good cards, decide to go with the Solemn Judgment here because I'm really scared of, say, an Evilly match or a Lightning Storm because while this deck can recur its resources fairly easily the next turn, I think Branded just sets up way too much card advantage in order for us to risk that. So it wasn't until Richard started his turn where I realized I messed up up forget me not being able to judgment under lost that sucks but there's something even worse i set my set rotation i completely blanked out and i forgot that i can't flip up necro valley on his turn for some reason in my head on my turn i thought it was a metaverse probably because i flipped the metaverse off of prosperity just a few moments ago so of course i was super tilted but one thing i've learned is that you have to restructure your mentality Whatever misplay you made was one play ago, you can't fix it. All you can do is keep playing and work with what you've got. So I mean, despite all of that, we actually do a fairly decent job of recovering here and setting up our own board, and it's going to turn into a very grindy game. Now, unfortunately for me, however, time wasn't really on my side. We were down to like 275 light points, so I had to concede. Now number two comes and we get the buy. So I thought I'd walk around in meanwhile and see if any cool games were happening, and very quickly, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just chill my phone till the next round. In the final round, we're up against Adrian on Flunderese. And while Shifter doesn't hurt my deck, I wanted to make Omega so that I can maybe try and rip out a Prosperity, Duality, or anything that could have him dig for a Floodgate out, or maybe he already had one in his hand. You never know. And what do you know? I'm actually sick. I end up hitting the best card imaginable in the situation, which is Unexplored Winds. And now it's for sure going to be very difficult for him to deal with my back row. Ayo, hey, that was the quickest skill drain flip of my life there wasn't much adrian could really do there i was about to do the setup which would give me three to four omni negates per turn so he ended up conceding for game two there's really not much to see he opened up with map did the full flu combo and all i had were weather cards with no board breakers let's just go game three game three i try to thin my deck out a little bit so that i can try to hit something i really need off of my prosperity i end up taking the gamma here eventually because i know that i can clear my board in order to make it live and here is the character development that you have all been waiting for not making the same mistake like i did in round one this time i activate set rotation and i make sure to grab the zombie road on my turn from here i just begin out resourcing him turn by turn and i know people aren't a fan of rainy camp Campus, but in situations like this one where I can consistently deny my opponent the chance to set any of their back row by bouncing it in the end phase makes the card just feel so freaking good. And it's also just another name that's really easy to link off with your field spell, which is something I also really like as well. Getting Solemn Judgment basically secures the win and we can actually say that we've won a round with Weather Painters. Yo, and that is a wrap for the first episode slash vlog. So we ended up getting fourth place somehow. Uh, honestly, could not tell you how. I guess the buy carried us really hard today. We got eight packs of Battles of Legend for prizing, but unfortunately, as per usual, my pack lock hasn't been the greatest. So we didn't really end up pulling anything. It is what it is. I mean, regardless, it was still really fun picking up a new deck and... I haven't really been to locals in the last two or three weeks. I've just been way, way too busy with school. So it was really nice just to be able to see some of my friends again. I have an idea for the next deck I want to play in this series. And the only hint I'm going to give you is that the deck is a huge fan favorite. So you definitely don't want to miss out. Ayo, hey, if you got a deck that you think is pretty good for this format, make sure you let me know down in the comments below. I'll check it out. And if it's any good, maybe I'll play it in a future vlog. With that said, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.